All right, how's everybody doing? Welcome to Monday. It is Monday here in the beautiful city of Chicago, June 29th. This episode 62. Episode 62 of Chicago Music Revealed. I'm Mike Jeffers, Chicago Jazz Magazine, chicagojazz.com, and also the Director of Entertainment and Programming at the Epiphany Center for the Arts. And thanks <laughs> to Craig Pilo for that incredible uh, theme song, as I always thank him, uh, craigpilo.com, for all your musical needs. He's out of L.A. out there. He's a good guy, and we'll probably have him on the show in the next couple of weeks. He, uh, he and I have been texting back and forth on the weekend, and uh, we were both out working out. So hopefully everybody got out and enjoyed the beautiful weather. I love the heat, so bring it on. I was very happy the, over the weekend. I'm sure a lot of people were not, but it was gorgeous. I did socially distant from everybody, by the way. Actually, I got out on the lakefront path uh, and uh, had my mask, luckily, because there was a lot of people out there. So I had to ride with the lake uh, on the lakefront with the mask on. So... Mayor, we're all good. Everybody's okay. But it was a smart thing. It was a beautiful day. So hopefully everybody is getting it out, enjoying the weather. We are keeping it good in Chicago. Before I bring on my first guest, well, my only guest today, what am I saying? My first guest, Chris Green. I wanted to mention congratulations to Dave Gemelo at the Green Mill and congratulations to Chris and Jeff and the whole gang over at Andy's Jazz Club. They got music started again here in Chicago this weekend. Green Mill, Dave Gemelo kicked it off on Friday. Andy's kicked it off on Friday as well. Dave's going to do seven nights a week again, two shows a night. And uh, everybody is socially distanced in uh, Green Mill, which is great. So you get to go in there. You get to check it out. There's a lot of great music happening. Um, he was the first boom. He knew he could go, and he went and opened it up. But everything's been safe. Howard Reich had a great article today. Thank you, Howard, for writing that in the Tribune. So he featured Andy's and the Green Mill. So check that out if you didn't read about it. Some great quotes from both of the both of the establishments. And, of course, Andy's is kicking it off, and they're doing Wednesday through Sunday at Andy's. And they also serve food, so you can get some food. I think they had some good crowds this weekend. Uh, they're obviously limited capacity-wise, but uh, – you got to start somewhere. You got to get the ball rolling. And those were the first two in the city to present live jazz. So congratulations to them. And stay up to date with all of that at ChicagoJazz.com, ChicagoJazzMagazine.com, and, of course, Chicago Music Reveal. Now, without further ado, I want to bring on my guest here, Chris Green. How are you, sir? Great to hey, see you. Good to see you, sir. Uh, you know, Good to virtually see you. That's that's right. That's right. Well, hey, we got to take what we can get these days, right? But I mean, okay. you know, before we get into the conversation with you, and you've got some some uh, stuff coming up with your group. You've got a new release that you put out a while ago, but it's it's up, and you've got a cool membership package that we're going to talk about. But before we do that, you've played at both of those spots. You've played at Green Mill. You've played at Andy's. I mean, yes. how important is it to to get the ball rolling again on the? Um, on the live music front, I mean, you as a musician who's used to working like six, seven nights a week sometimes, it's got to feel good to at least be able to have that opportunity to hear people are actually starting to open up venues again. I'm glad. And, and I'm I'm glad at least Chicago or in Illinois, at least we seem to be somewhat smart about our, you know, reopening everything. And so I'm, I'm happy that they're they're doing what they can to keep the musicians safe, the audience safe, you know, and, and, and still present the, the quality music that they're known for. So it's, I'm, I'm glad to see it's, I'm glad to see it's opening, but I'm also glad to see that everybody's kind of taking this, the current environment seriously and, and, you know, looking out for everybody, making sure that although we're living in strange times, people are still wanting to, to take precautions, the necessary precautions to make sure everybody is safe. Well, that's the only, you know, and, and it's funny it's not funny. It's interesting that when all of this stuff went down and everybody got quarantined, everybody had to stay home. You know, there was a lot of people complaining. Oh my gosh, we're, we're we got to wear a mask. We're stuck inside. We got all this business going on, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Thank God we did that because we flattened the curve and we're driving it down as opposed to some of the other States that opened a little bit too early. And now they're in some serious trouble and they're exactly. set way back. And we exactly. in Chicago don't want to be set way back. We've already lost an entire summer of festivals. Yep. And you know, if we don't get these clubs back open uh, soon, we're going to be losing more and more music. And uh, it's, it's important. This is not a joke. So 
I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad everybody's taking this seriously. But again, I was really impressed with some of the guidelines that uh, the Green Mill has and the Andy's Jazz Club has. And I know you and I talked a little bit. You guys are going to be playing at the Epiphany Center for the Arts in the fall. And when we open yeah. that up in September, we've got a lot of guidelines and safety procedures. It's the only way to move forward here until there's a vaccine. And it's going to be a while before that happens. So you exactly. got to get live music happening again, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we as musicians, we, we're the mixed blessing, of course, is that, you know, we, with the downtime, I'm able to like work all the stuff that, you know, a pile of in my office, like, you know, songs and learn or <laughs> various, you know, compositions in various states of completion or whatever, or, or, or stuff, or stuff that I'm working like etude books or whatever. So it's like, okay, the blink, the blessing is that I had had all this time to, you know, work it out and practice all this stuff. Now it's time. Now it's like, okay, it's time to put the stuff in back and put it in play and, you know, get out and play and try to make, try to carve out some semblance of a living and that kind of thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad that things are slowly starting to starting to open up. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and I, I you and I talked offline um, a little bit and, you know, it, it, it's, it's also one of those things too. We have that little downtime. Well, we still have a downtime. There's only a couple yeah. of clubs open. It's not like we're flush with a lot of wild, uh, wild gigs happening, but you know, we, we had that little downtime and I think a lot of musicians took advantage of the fact that they can learn how to work through the technology field here and figure out different ways to connect with their audiences from a live music standpoint online with all these resources we've had. And to your point, it's really difficult when you don't have any time because you're running from one gig to another, to a teaching gig, to this, to that, to playing. Um, right. you've taken the advantage of that side of it too, because you're starting to connect with people virtually. You started a, you've got your, your recording that came out just before the pandemic called play space, play space. So we'll yep. talk about that, but then you also established a membership, uh, program on your website. Now, how many musicians have membership programs as part of their, <laughs> as part of their website, but I love it. So talk, let's talk a little bit first off about the membership program, and then we'll circle back and talk about play space. Okay. Well, it's there's a there's the main big agenda and then there's the little little tiny agenda. The little the little tiny agenda is I'm I'm kind of as as useful as a tool as Facebook has been kind of weighing my options of whether I mean it's definitely important. It's, it's you know the biggest, you know whatever um one of the biggest social platforms out there. Right. But it's got some weird stuff with ads and everything else and you know the, the current political climate isn't really helping. So part of me wants to like move, you know, try at least move some of my, some of the attention away to, a, you know, a, a platform where I can, I can control. And also mm -hmm. just, um, the year, I mean, like, like you to like what you just said, like we're, we're certainly in a situation where a lot of uh, musicians and, and, and I guess it's been always been like this anyway, like in, uh, when this pandemic wasn't happening, you know, any night of the week, you could see, you could go to this place, you could go to that place, you could go, whatever. It's almost kind of the same thing, whereas like you've got uh, a various great musicians at any given time giving live stream concerts at their church or in their basement or whatever. And so, I, I, and I'm, I applaud, I think that's all really cool. What, what I'm just trying to do is with this membership thing is just kind of like, okay, let me give the people who really want to follow what the quartet does like you know here's some here's some exclusive footage that i there's some um concert footage that i haven't that i never bothered to upload to facebook or youtube or whatever or here's a, a soundboard recording that we got that we were probably going to use for a demo or something but you know it actually sounds pretty good maybe with a little sprucing here you know you can you can have you can have it for free or you can if you want to well, you, the cool thing is, like, if you pay the the nine ninety nine membership fee, you get basically our whole catalog. You know, you can download it at any time. There's uh, little freebies here and there, and then we we might just offer up a few more freebies there, or like yeah. some interview clips or whatever that, or uh, that we haven't uh, published or anything. Just so it just we're just trying to like really really reward the people that have really stuck, you know, followed us and stuck in there and and uh, and. Uh, and, and been following us and supporting us all these years. Well, and, and, and I love the membership thing because, you know, when, when you get down into it, I mean, when you really look at it, how, how many memberships are we subscribed to when you look at it? I mean, you got apps, you've got all these different things that you're subscribed to $3 here, $15 there, blah, blah, right. blah. 
But I mean, for an artist to be able to do this, first of all, so they actually have access to your whole catalog. So they're going to be able to check out your whole catalog. Yep. So which all, is, which all is of like, our CDs, all, all of our recorded output this, that we've officially put out. Yeah. And, and then we've also got it. We've also, we've also, there's a series of recordings that we've done that we've kind of called playtime, which yep. have basically been like board record, like soundboard recordings or, or something like that, that we, we didn't, didn't necessarily meet the quality to put out like, uh, you know, to sell, but you know, Hey, you know, again, kind of a thank you to, you know, here's something free or whatever. So we, we, we've done that as well. So we've kind of, those are originally available, uh, at the, at our Bandcamp page, but we've kind of moved that on. The, under, so if you want to hear them, if you pay the nine ninety nine per month, you can hear those and download those anytime you want. So how um, many, um, how many releases do you have? Totally, uh, nine, or nine CD releases, uh, seven with the quartet and then two with an earlier band that I had. But, uh, yeah, like I said, if I you mean, pretty much, you pretty much get all, all nine recordings, you yeah. know, right at, you know, either, uh, at the Bandcamp website or, or, or actually on the Bandcamp app as well. So, well, you know, you know, I love marketing and I love, I love messaging and all that. I mean, they're essentially getting like $200 worth of value for the nine ninety nine right off the bat. Right. Exactly. I mean, with all of that stuff. I mean, give me a break. That's like a that's a no brainer right there. I mean, that's great. But I love the fact that you're going to be able to grow this because you guys in normal times, you guys are working all the time. So there's going to be little snippets. You're probably going to drop a tune here, drop a tune there that nobody else can get unless they're a member. Probably when you can get back in the clubs, there's going to be little, you know, discounts on tickets and all that good stuff that you're going to be able to offer to your your members, which is, which I love because that it, it just helps everybody, you know? Exactly. And I, and I try to think of like, like the artists that I liked growing up, if, you know, or whether they were alive or, or had passed away before I like discovered them or started listening to them, like how awesome would it have been if, you know, Miles Davis had a fan club or something, maybe, or maybe he did, but if, <laughs> if there was some kind of like thing that some kind of little some kind of really cool extra stuff that you would get if, you know, just by being in that little thing, you know, or just by, you know, and that, and this is not to say that you, you know, I want as many people to, to follow us as possible, but you know, there, there's something for the, there's something for the casual listener who comes to see you once a year, but then there's something for the people who really, really follow you or, or, or really, really interested for like interested in new content. Like, Hey, like I said, here's a, here's some live footage. Or here's a here's a funny moment from a concert that I've never posted anywhere. Or here's something from here's something me here's me, me here's me here's me playing in I don't know and I was taking a solo in high school or whatever. Look how far I've come. Yeah, right. Isn't this funny? You know, look at my hair. Isn't that hilarious? You know. <laughs> so. Well, I th I think you're you know I I love the fact too that you're you're kind of bringing it inside. So I mean you're still going to be on the social platforms. But you're also getting control over your brand because if something happens and if Facebook decides they want to block everybody that has music on their website or something, you, everybody is stuck. I mean, it's there wrong, you go. Right. Exactly. So, I, mean, I mean, and I've heard of instances where people have musicians have posted their own music on a social platform, like underneath something that they're doing, some kind of funny clip or whatever. Yep. And they've gotten in trouble with the social media, with social platform for posting their own music. Like, do you own the copyright of this music? It's like, yes, it's my song. Now it hasn't right. happened, hasn't happened to me, but I've heard of fellow, my fellow peers. Oh yeah. That kind of issue. And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, all right, well, if that's going to happen, you know, let's, let's, let's move this over here where, like you said, I've got a little more control over the content and how it's received and how it's, how it's presented. Yeah, no, I, I love it. So everybody go over to Chris green quartet.com. Check, out the VIP experience. Actually, that's on chrisgreenquartet.com. Oh, that's what I yes. said. chrisgreenjazz.com, chrisgreenquartet.com. Either way, if you go to chrisgreenjazz.com, you'll you'll find it. You'll get over to it. So you'll now get, let's talk about PlaySpace, though, this new recording that you put out. Now, uh, you and I were talking. I, did you come down to Epiphany, and did we talk about this show? Is that why when you came down and then you guys recorded at, at – space because that was like back in the in the winter time right or no that that okay. was a uh, that we we played that show actually that 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 was uh march 1st as a matter of fact was uh, one that was actually one of our last gigs yeah. before the before the shutdown uh but it was a great show it's always it's great to play there um the 
concert that ended up being on PlaySpace was recorded uh, two years ago, but we we dropped it uh, last year. Okay. And uh, and it was just it was really just I never I usually most of our releases are kind of like we have these kind of long range goals like we'll release it we'll get the you know get the re- resources together to promote blah blah mm-hmm. blah get the you know get the um, radio thing happening everything else it was like they're really uh, concerted coordinated efforts. This was just kind of like, you know, uh, we, 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 space has the option. If you play there, you, you for like a small little fee, you can get, um, um, you can, they can get multi-track recordings there. And so, you know, if you go in there with your, you know, portable hard drive, you can just have the tracks loaded on your, on your yep. thing and, and walk out. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, if it, if it ends up, if it ended up being a, it was a great show, but I, I was like, okay, you know, I'm sure I was moving around or whatever, or who knows, maybe I bumped into the mic or whatever. So you never know how it's going to come out technically. Right. So I, I listened to them and I was like, you know, before I really took a listen, I was like, okay, maybe they'll just be demos or maybe I'll make this another one of the free giveaways on the, on the website or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it ended up sounding really, really good. Uh, it had dawned on me that we, as a group, we really hadn't had a live uh, documentation of the band since, 2012 so this is like yeah. you know so this was like what eight years of gigs and growth and individual uh in, individual improvement but our improvement as a band uh are, you know playing together night after night after night and so uh, it just kind of dawned on me like we don't really don't have any any um any documentation of the band as, as how it sounds now and so i kind of listened to those tracks and i'm like okay we just kind of and I and and I kind of put it to the band like you know, okay, these are the songs that we did that night, which sound the best. And so we kind of talked it through, and I like that one. I didn't like that one. I like that one. So we kind of whittled it down to the songs that were on there, mixed it up, and and put it out. Just kind of like no frills, surprise release. Like hey folks, we've got a new album out, and and it ended up uh, doing pretty well and getting some good some good notice. And it's been it's been it's been it's 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 been nice because then people people who hadn't heard of heard the album were like, wow, that's what, that's what those guys sound like, man, I gotta go check them out. So it was, yep. it was really, it was cool. It's been I, a really I, cool thing. I love, I love, I mean, the studio recordings are great, but I love the live recording because, and especially with your group. Now you, I know we talk about this every time I have you on the show, but I mean, it's still astonishing to me that you have your group together for how many years have you guys been together now? The group has been together since 2005, so wow, 15 years. 15 and the years. only, like I said, the only uh, the only personnel change we've made is uh, we made we got our drummer Steve Corley. He joined us in 2011, and so he's been with us uh, nine years now. So, I mean, to, to to keep and we we always talk about this, but I, I love talking about it because I think there's a lot of people watching this that maybe haven't seen some of the other other interviews we've done. But to be able to keep a jazz group together, you know. You can put rock bands together and people play for 15 years because it's a rock band. They have their original tunes and they're playing their tunes and they don't have a lot of other outlets to go and play like one off gigs in a rock scene. I mean, necessarily, unless you're, you know, unless you're like in the scene where you're sitting in with a lot of people with jazz, everybody's always mishmashing and jumping from one group to another or playing a gig or playing this gig or that gig or whatever. But you guys have original tunes. You guys have been playing together for 15 years plus. Mm -hmm. I mean, and jazz is one of those uh, one of those genres that it's like the longer a group stays together, the better it's going to get because everybody's interaction is going to be playing off of each other for 15 years as opposed to 15 True. minutes. So, you know, what what are some of the struggles? I mean, some of some of the some of the things that you've gone through to, to keep a band together for 15 years is, is it, it must be important to constantly try to keep playing gigs right to keep everybody inner uh engaged in the band i would imagine absolutely um it, you know it it in a weird way it 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 start and probably started out a little difficult because you know any project you get off the ground you know people have got to you know people got to take gigs or whatever people have you know if you've got something but then somebody comes with, with something that pays more or whatever they've got to take it or whatever so but for the most you know the guys know that for the most part like you know the, the guys know that when i get a gig I'm going to call them. Um, they know that they're my first call guys, and so con- as a as a as a con- as a as a result, um, there's they're very little in the way of subbing out. Like maybe once in a blue moon, something will happen, or there'll be a family emergency or something like that. That'll that'll happen, and then we've got a nice crew of people that we work with. But 
the guys are the guys know that I'm gonna they know that I'm gonna bust my tail to keep them working and get them put them in situations where hopefully that their, their talent they feel that their talents are respected uh hopefully they'll be you know if you know no one's necessarily no one's getting rich off of what we're doing but it's at the same time where it's consistent it's it's fun you know it's a it's a we all like each other on a, you know we, are, we respect each other's musicianship but we respect each other as people um and and, and so i think you know that perpet that perpetual motion of of work and camaraderie helps plus you know i i um I they I encourage everybody to write for the band. So like I write stuff, or I'll bring in stuff. They'll bring you know they'll bring in music. They'll write stuff. And what it, what ends up happening is in, in rehearsals like um you know I'll play you know I'll bring in a tune, but I can't figure out how to end it. And so Mark is really good at our bass player Mark is really good at like figuring out how to end songs and you know like inter keeping them interesting and creative, or like you know this is the chords I had in mind, Damien how do you, how would you play this? You know, and, mm -hmm. and Damien, our piano player will fool around with it, maybe make some changes or, you know, I'll sing a, a drum beat to Steve, our drummer. And, you know, this is, this is what I, I had this scenario in mind. I had this kind of beat in mind. What would you do with that situation? How would you, how would you make that interesting that keep that same feel, but make it interesting over the course of, you know, seven to 10 minutes. And so we've also, the guys also, in addition to feeling hopefully personally and musically respected, they're also allowed to put their imprint on, on the music as well. So it's, it's not just, it's not just me up there. It's the four of us. And, uh, they're, they're, it's as much, you know, in a lot of ways, it's as much their band as it is mine. Well, and that, and that's, I think the, the, one of the biggest factors too, right? Cause it's called the Chris green quartet, but you've always included them. You're not like the dictator here showing up and saying, this is the way it's going down. And, and that, to your point, that's probably one of the major reasons they feel like it's a band. It's not like they're backing Chris green up. It's no. a band. It just happens to be called Chris green quartet. Cause you've been around for so long. You can't change the name. It's like, right. Break. Exactly. But, Plus I, I, I booked the gig. So I get the, I get the name of the band. <laughs> so I think, I think that's only fair. If I book the gigs, I get the name of the band, that's but, it. uh, <laughs> But no, no, but you and also just you know if you think about it like the 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 people that we idolize like you know Monk had a band yep. Monk had Tony Monk had steady bands Duke Ellington had a steady band Coltrane had a steady band yep. you know uh, 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 Ella Fitzgerald had her, had her long standing partnership with like Joe Pass and all these people that she worked with there's just you know there's this this precedent in 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 long standing ensembles um, and you know. It, I mean, you know, it's just, it's, you know, unfortunately, you know, we, we live in a situation where everybody's got to take the work that they can, which is, which is certainly, which is, uh, you know, completely understandable. But I, the, the guys know that I'm busting my tail for them. And because they know that they, they're willing to leave their, leave me a certain amount of leeway in their schedules. Yeah. Like, you know, so, or if someone comes with us, asks us for a date and two, three of us can do it, but one can't, I'll, you know, I'll just be like, you know what, let's see if we can get another date. Uh, it's cause it's, cause it's important for me to, to put our, our best foot forward. Mm -hmm. And I could go in there with a sub and it would probably sound perfectly fine, but I would probably be just a little bit hesitant the whole gig, just like, you know, I, which I try not to do. My guys tease me whenever I have a sub. I'm always like pointing stuff like the drummer. We, I always hire great drummers, yeah. but I'm always like, you got that change and blah, blah, blah and everything. And I'm always probably a little more worried than I need to be as opposed to just worrying about it. But if we have, if I've got my three guys there. I'm not worried about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, and, and I mean, you know, not to, not to, um, uh, you know, toot your own horn here, but I mean, it takes a lot to be a leader to run a band like that and to have the patience to be able to put something like that together. And to your credit, you're able to, you know, work with a lot of people and, and make sure everybody feels included. And that, that is part of being a leader of a group, but also that's the reason why a band sticks around for 15 years and continues to have fun and play together because it's, it's a, it's a group effort, but you include them, you know, you're, you're you're including them in all of these decisions too. I know when we were talking about the epiphany thing, you want to make sure everybody was cool before you could take the date, which was great. I mean, a lot of people don't do that. You know, they take the date and then they see who can do it, and if they can't do it, well, then they'll get another sub. But I mean, you know, that right. that's probably 
a great reason why you guys have such camaraderie and you guys love playing. And then you guys have toured, you guys have done stuff throughout the country and, and, mm -hmm. and driving around and doing little mini tours and things. I mean, that takes a lot out of a band, but you guys have a good time and you guys can continuously be creative and keep writing music and composing. I mean, is that like a mindset in your mind? Just it's like, you know what? I'm never going to get disgruntled. This is like what I want to do. So let's just make something happen. And over the years, it's just kind of turned into the Chris Green Quartet where you guys are an established name in Chicago and in the Midwest. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's like you could you could piss and moan about a couple of things, but as, as far as like, you know, but you're, but you're right. It's like this is this is what it is and, and this is what I enjoy doing. And, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be work, work side man with like some great leaders and some great yeah. bands. This, I kind of, it's weird. I, I kind of, the, the older I get, I kind of, I've been kind of looking at like the CGQ is kind of like my, my musical 401k. It's like, I'm, I'm putting all kind of putting all allocating my resources from other bands in, into this and, and making it work. And, you know, eventually the, eventually the goal is to live off of that but you know and and some and some months i and some parts of the year i do because exclusively and some not some yeah. others i'm working with other people but it's at the same time and that's what everybody's every, everybody's really um everybody's committed and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very 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 fortunate to have guys that are are committed to what what we do and and they know that i want to put the best foot forward and they i've never had any issues with like people being drunk on gigs or, or, or punctuality or any of that kind of thing. It's just like these guys have been, have, have been consummate professionals and just great people to great people to make music with. So, and I'm just really, really fortunate. Well, and, and we should talk a little bit because uh, speaking of you guys playing, you guys just did something for WDCB 90.9 FM, our favorite jazz station here in Chicago. Yeah, that's and right. you, you did a uh, recording where you guys did a live performance at Water Street Studios. They recorded it and you guys are going to be you're going to be streaming it uh, Friday, July 10th on your Facebook page on the Chris Green Quartet Facebook page, I assume. Yes. Yes. So we streamed it or it was streamed from uh, Water, okay. Water Street Studios. Basically, uh, it was kind of a virtual concert. Uh, you bought tickets at Eventbrite, and then uh, they and at the at the very last minute, right before the show, you got a you got a secret link, and then you got to got to watch the show, uh, and it was great, and it was a really really good response. It was a it was a really it sounded it sounded really good. It was this it was um, uh, kind of, I guess kind of a sign of the times. It was like you know we were we were in this space that was supposed to hold a hundred people, and the gig was originally canceled, but it got re. Uh, we, uh, but Ken Scott, shout out to Ken Scott, had the great had this great idea like let's do the concert, let's just uh, record it and and film it and then stream it, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's let's stream it at a later date, and so it ended up looking good and sounding good, and so we, we he gave uh, they, we got the footage from the uh, audio company and we're, we're going to stream it from our uh, platforms on Friday June, uh, July 10th. Nice, nice. So that's going to be. What time? Do you guys know what time you drop that? 7.30. Um, 7.30 p.m. All right. I have that information at chrisgreenjazz.com, so we'll send everybody yes. over there as well. Um, and then you also have one more, right? You're, you're going to be doing the Montrose um, Saloon. Is that right? Yes. So we're, 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 we're dipping our toes back into uh, to performing out in front of people. Um, so what a, uh, Thank God, so, right? Thank God. Exactly. So you said, <laughs> like I mentioned with um, – with the Andes and the and Green yep. Hill, uh, this great place, Montro Saloon. They've been they've been around forever, but they've been under new management uh, ownership for the past couple of years. Uh, Eric Chow, uh, fantastic guy, loves music, loves musicians. Um, it was always like a great little neighborhood hang. Um, wants to get music wants to get his music going again. So we're we're playing there on uh, on a Sunday, a Sunday the. 5th, I believe. It's Sunday the 5th. And I was just and, looking at, I was just looking it up because I didn't have the address, but it's 2933 West Montrose Avenue in Chicago. Yep, exactly. No no cover charge. Come on in. Uh, You're playing you know, outside on the patio, right? Yep, outside on the patio. Bring your masks and your That's hand right. sanitizer and all that good stuff. <laughs> have a well, good that, time. Hey, that that's that's it's just exciting to hear there's some live music starting to happen again here in Chicago, isn't it? It's just like, man, oh man, I'm this 
And, and, and again, I mean, like I yeah. talked about at the beginning of the show, it's going to be a slow roll. Everybody's got to mm-hmm. make sure everybody's socially distant and we don't have another outbreak here. But uh, the mm-hmm. fact that we've gotten over the hump a little bit and we're starting to do live music and you guys are going to be happening. What the, what's the date again? Because I didn't write that down. There, uh, sorry about it. Sunday, July 5th. July 5th. Oh, it's this yep. one. It's this Sunday. It's- Yep, six to six to nine p.m. Six to nine. All right, and all that information is going to be up on chrisgreenjazz.com as well. Yep, yep. Excellent. All right. Well, Chris, as always, pleasure talking to you. Thanks for being on the show. I think this is your third show. This is the third third interview. I think you so. Did, you I did think one so. at uh, one at Johnny O's. Yes, uh, that's right. Know, yes, then, we did. Then you did uh, yes. one at uh, yeah, Epiphany, did. and now we're doing one virtually. Exactly. Well, I just I uh, if no one I, I should say this and no if no one ever tells you and this is I, from the heart like thank you seriously for all you do for you know promoting the scene and you know keeping us keeping our names out there and helping out the scene uh, helping out musicians so thank you so much for doing this and all that you do so well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate it very much. And uh, you know all of us have to stick together here and and try to keep pushing things out. So I'm doing my small part and, uh, you know, as much as I can do. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate all of the friendship over the years and congratulations on the new release play space. Congratulations on the VIP experience. I mean, it's a $200 value folks head over there and get that right now. It's only nine 99 a month. You can't beat that. Exactly. Chris green. Exactly. Quartet. Who who your, your monthly Hulu subscription costs more than that. Come on. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, give me a break. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and uh, check out the live stream on July 10th on Facebook, on Chris Green Jazz Facebook page, and, of course, WDCB's live stream. Um, well, WDCB already did the live stream, but then the Montrose Saloon this Sunday. See, you do have a lot of crap going on. Man, oh, man, yeah. for the quarantine, you're busy already. I'm trying, you know, got to keep it going. You know, that's <laughs> that's the thing. Like, now the stuff starts starts to open up. People are starting to ask my guys, are they busy on certain days? Like, no, no, I got them. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, good problem to have, right? Thank God. There you go. All right. Hey, Chris, I'm talking to you as usual, and uh, we will catch up again. Sounds good. Thank uh, you. All right. Thanks. All right. Chris Green, man. He moves over here. That up. Oh, I, I knew I was going to do that off there. Here we go. Okay. So, Chris Green, uh, always a pleasure to have him on. It's a pleasure talking to him, and I love the fact that he's got so much stuff happening. I mean, you know, it's it's always – it's always uh, interesting uh, talking to people these days because of the quarantine, because of COVID and everything else. But, it, you know, all of these musicians, regardless of the genre, because we do do a lot of different genres in Chicago Music Revealed other than jazz. But because I own Chicago Jazz Magazine, we've got great relationships with all of the great jazz musicians in Chicago. And they've been navigating the live stream, navigating how to do things uh, in a quarantine situation. But it is nice to actually be able to go and go to Andy's, go to Green Mill, go to the Montrose, Montrose Saloon and a few other spaces that are going to be opening up. Winter's Jazz Club, by the way, Scott just touched base with me today. They're going to be doing a live stream concert. I'm going to get more information. We'll talk about that tomorrow on the show, which is going to happen at 6 p.m. right here. Of course, an announcement on all of the different musicians that are happening this week. Visit ChicagoMusicRevealed.com. We've got all the information up there. And as I always say right here on Chicago Music Reveal. I appreciate everyone watching, everyone listening. Check out the podcast as well. It's on all the podcast platforms. If you missed any of the shows, visit Chicago Music Reveal for past episodes. And again, tomorrow, 6 p.m., as I always say, tell your neighbors, call the family, call the grandkids. Chicago Music Revealed right here. Tomorrow's broadcast, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Look forward to seeing everyone then.